Yeah, so what we're looking at here is the septic tank. Uh, it has been recently covered. There were two holes in the cover. Um, this tank holds the sewage from all the buildings we see behind it, the staff room, the technical drawing room, the art room, and the sports room, and this end, the southern end of the building. So that's what you just look at here, is the septic system. But we could talk about it some more. Before the covers were put on, there were two holes there. When you look down there, you could see mosquitoes down the building and just water. There was no real stuff in it. And we were told that when Admiral came to pump it, they were surprised that there was not much stuff in there. Obviously, it wasn't reaching here. And so what happened, they did some work on it to augment it. And they put on two breathers on top. They said it didn't have a breather. But uh, when they had the carnival, somebody knocked, over it, knocked them over with the car. So we put these poles around to prevent people from parking on top of it and knocking over the breeders. But what happened, um, I think the problem with the breeders go further than this. As we go along, we'll see. In order to get to the septic, the sewage has to pass through these copper pipes, which you could see coming out there. The copper pipes are the old time way. And if you look inside the copper pipe, you could see rust. That is, these pipes over 40 years old, they already begin to rot and rust. But in those days, they didn't, the technology didn't allow them to bend the pipe. So whenever they wanted to change direction, they built a box like this, a junction box, or I don't know, maybe a connection box. So you could see two different pipes coming in on the top in a Y shape and making one exit at the bottom, and that heads to the septic tank. All over the yard, there are several of these. And some of these, as you could see from the cracks on the side, have become compromised. These boxes are obsolete. There are no breaks in the pipe in modern sewage systems. This box um, sometimes gets overwhelmed and water fully up to the brim. And whenever it gets full, the, the sewage cannot pass to get to the tank. So the tank might be empty, but you end up with raw sewage here on the ground. If you look at the debris that's here, some of this debris is like modest, what you call the, the sanitary napkin, the female sanitary pad, and those kind of things. All this is the stuff that came out of the hole when they cleared it this morning. Now, right now, if you flush the toilet, you would notice that the sewage passed right there in plain view. Now, 50 years ago when this was built, that was okay. But that is not according to the building code now. You can't have open sewage passing through boxes like that now. The same box that you're seeing here, there are several of them around the compound. There's another one above there. And there's also one inside the building, inside the classroom, open just like that. And that is one of the problems where you're causing all the backflow and irritation and things like that. So here's another one. What you have here is two set of pipes. You see the big cast iron pipe at the bottom that brings sewage and then you see some smaller ones on the top those bring water from the sink the, my problem with this is that the sewage and the sink ain't supposed to come in the same junction box and as you can see the junction box all and crumbling when they opened it this man the guy just ripped it out with his hand and you know sewage was right there and it was blocked so no sewage could pass through that's another compromise in the system what you're looking at now is the vent with the old cast iron pipes leading from the toilets in the main girls' bathroom. Though that pipe sticking up there is supposed to travel all the way to the roof to carry the noxious septic gases out of the way where they don't affect anybody. But being shot like that, I don't know if they broke off or anything, the fumes now would rise up out of that and go straight into the window as a backdraft into the building. That might be one of the things causing people to get sick. If you look to the left, sorry, to the right over here, you will see another one that has been, the top has been knocked off of it. And if you look at it, you could see a hole. That hole, if you put the nose close to it, you will smell septic because that goes straight to the septic tank. Now those, they were meant to go all the way to the roof, but for some reason, I don't know if by hurricane or whatever, they were reduced to that height. And those lines carry raw, septic, all over the place. When we go inside, you will see the lead where this one connects to the system box inside, the transfer case that brings the sewage outside. You will realize that it's open just like this. This is not supposed to have a hole like that. This hole is supposed to go all the way to the roof as a breather for the same septic tank. But again, all of this is obsolete. 
the system is not on the building code. This was done in the same style as the sugar factory back in the 1950s and 1940s. These cast iron vents you see in there, those are the ones that are the breeder for the septic system. But you could see how close they are to the windows. And therefore, any fumes that come in out of those go straight into the window and cause people to get sick. Very close proximity to the classroom. As a matter of fact, there's one like that inside, in the classroom itself, which you could go inside and take a look at. Right now, we are at the back of the bathroom from the staff room. And as you can see, one of these vents has a pipe on top of it, and that pipe leads to a sink. So whenever these fumes come up, they could travel straight to the sink and end up inside, in the, in the space where the teachers occupy. If you look up, you could see the windows to the technical drawing room, and on the left, the windows to the staff room. And so the fumes could travel from that system straight inside, and that could make people sick as well. It's not, I don't think that the plumbing for the sink should connect to the plumbing for the toilet. So simple like that. So that might be a problem that needs to be rectified. That needs to have a vent that goes all the way up to the roof to get rid of the noxious fumes. So you would get sewage fumes in this pipe, even though it's just a drain line, because it connected directly to the sewage line. And so even though this goes into a sink where you would wash your hand and wash your face, sewage fumes could go back to there because those old pipes never had on the, the fumes trap. There's a trap that you build with a S shape of the PVC, but these old pipes never had it. And this, the chemistry lab have the same setup like that. When we go up, we can see this one. Once water gather on the roof, it seep through the concrete and cause this mold and moss and mildew. But you could see there, usually, when rain falls, this will drip for days. But right now, I guess because it's dry, you're not seeing any water dripping. But that's perfect breeding ground for all those bacteria and fungal, these biological agents which is test showed, showed up, the microbiological factors. Microbiological pathogens. Yes, that is what you're going to find there. All right, so you could see that on every column, you have the black stuff and the moss and, the, and, the, and that stuff. Every beam have it. And sometimes water drip for days and days and days. Because on top of this roof, because there's poor drainage, you find that the water doesn't, doesn't run away. It settles. And sometimes it even eat away the concrete. As you could see here, the concrete falling down. It's eating out. The, the steel are exposed. And usually that happens through oxidation. And those steel will get oxidized in the concrete if water is there. Water not draining properly. And so it causes all of that. These could fall on anybody here at any time because they're just flaking off and falling down. If we look here. Yeah, if you look here, you could see the mildew, the mold, and the moss that's formed when the water settles and seeps through the concrete over time. It's perfect breeding ground for all those bacteria and microbiological particles that are making people sick. Now you see how the water coming through the concrete has destroyed the outer bound sign and how it caused major damage to the concrete where you could see the moss and the mildew and the mold and you could also see the steel being exposed from the cracking and the expanding of the steel from the water. That's dangerous because all of that just waiting to collapse on somebody's head. If you could look here, oops, sorry, you could see all of that just coming down. Okay, so you only have to touch it and it's down. So I don't and know. That, that is a small thing. Sometimes we come over the weekend, we make chunks of it on the ground. So now we're entering one of the rooms where the sewage system appears inside. And as you could see on the left, there's a small window next to the artwork on the wall. That window leads to the open sewage system inside. So once you open that door, you will be able to see the old time way, how the pipes were routed and how the, the sewage passed through to get to the outside. But as I said, that system is no longer viable. That's no longer standard practice. It's outdated. So we could look inside and see what's going on. On the ground, you could see the debris that was taken from India, a lot of stuff eaten by wood lice and, and infested by roaches. The roaches have already left since we opened the door, but you could see that that definitely, you know, under some bad condition. All that debris was in there. I guess some of it was put in there a long time ago for storage, but even the desk, that old desk on, the, on top there was in there. I don't know if somebody were using it to get to the ceiling, 
because once you get in there, you have access to the ceiling of the entire building. 